Oh, an ant. Oh, hi. You caught me solving a problem with a stick of dynamite. Speaking of reasonable solutions like this, let's talk about today's superhero, Dynamite Thor. Hello, welcome to Comic Tropes. I'm your host, Chris. Golden Age comics offer us some of the most entertaining stories, and they usually fall into one of two categories. Either brilliant new ideas like Superman, or batshit crazy, what were they thinking ideas like the stuff I've covered before. Sergeant Spook, the ghost cop, or Captain Fearless, who could call on the help of his ghost grandfather whenever he was in trouble. Which category do you suppose today's superhero, Dynamite Thor, will fall into? Well, here's a hint. He solved every problem in front of him with a stick of dynamite. Before we continue, please consider hitting like and subscribe. And without any further ado, let's dig into the adventures of Dynamite Thor. Dynamite Thor was a superhero who debuted in 1940 in the pages of the anthology title Weird Comics. And if that seems to be a little too on the nose, keep in mind the other characters found within the pages of Weird Comics included Navy Jones, who could breathe underwater and liked to use regular guns, and The Dart, a Roman soldier who is cursed to wake up in the modern day. Dart witnesses a kid's parents get killed in a drive-by, so he teaches him how to fly. In other words, when we say that Dynamite Thor is weird, we have to grade on a curve. Why exactly is he called Dynamite Thor specifically? Well, he has absolutely nothing to do with the Norse god of thunder, if that's what you were wondering. No, instead, that was an idea that Fox Features Syndicate Comics had already tried and failed at, so they just decided to give their next idea the same name. The original comic book Thor showed up in Weird Comics number one and was portrayed as having a winged helmet, a red cape, and long blonde hair. He could also throw his hammer, which would magically return to him. If that sounds similar to the Marvel Comics character that showed up 22 years later, you might be wondering, hey, did Stan Lee base his idea off of an existing superhero? Well, that's a tough question, and of course he did. The character we're going to focus on today, Dynamite Thor, first appeared in issue 6 of Weird Comics, but the first thing worth noting about the issue is this strange ad that's found on the inside cover. It's for Cuba Cola. Do you remember Cuba Cola? No reason you should. It never existed. To understand why a fake soda was being advertised in the pages of this comic, you have to understand the publisher of Fox Features Syndicate, a guy named Victor Fox. Victor Fox wasn't really a writer or an artist per se. What he did was he would just buy stories from studios that existed at the time, places like Eisner and Iger, and he would just take those short stories and package them together into anthology comic books. So that's the kind of guy he was, and one day, Victor thought he had a brilliant idea. He noticed that Coke and Pepsi sold very well with young people, the same people that were reading his comics. So he thought to himself, hey, what if I invented a soda? But instead of inventing the soda, what he decided to do was advertise his own made-up soda with the hopes that a soda manufacturer would approach Victor and say, hey, everybody's asking about Cuba Cola. Can I buy the rights and make that myself? Well, no one ever came up with that. That's just who Victor Fox was. And without any further ado, let's continue talking about Dynamite Thor. Dynamite Thor was an idea that was thrown at the wall to see if it would stick. He didn't even last as long as Cuba Cola, just five issues. The character debuts in a dynamic panel, which has a lot to unpack. There's a credit for Wright Lincoln, but that was likely a shared name that the house uses, because there's no real info on who Wright Lincoln was. Dynamite Thor's origin is summed up in a caption box that says that he's a wealthy mine owner named Peter Thor. Yes, this gentleman called himself Dynamite Thor using his own real last name. I probably don't need to explain to you why this is a bad idea, but let me put it like this. If my name was Chris Panther and I decided to call my superhero self 
Black Panther, that would be a bad idea for two reasons. One, it's probably racist if I did something like that. And two, if I started using my own last name, a good deal of my friends might put two and two together, especially since this is a superhero that doesn't wear a mask. Peter listens to the radio and happens to overhear that a criminal gang is trapped in a shack by the police. Most of us would think that means the situation is handled, but Peter shouts to himself that this is a job for him. He's wearing what's called a special costume. Special because it has a belt full of dynamite. Yes, this man wears highly volatile nitroglycerin under his business suit on the off chance he hears about some criminals he can use it on. Dynamite Thor now races to the scene of the crime along the electric wires. Weird flex, but okay. The strangest thing about all of this, however, may be that he seems to be running around without any pants on. Dynamite arrives at the scene of the shootout and decides the first thing he can do to de-escalate the shootout is to toss some explosives into the middle of the battle. For some reason, this works. He then runs up to the police officer and orders him to let him take over. Why does this police officer allow Dynamite Thor to take over? He's never met him before. This is just a man in spandex that ran up carrying explosives. Well, first of all, he is white, and second of all, I'm guessing that Dynamite Thor runs around with some major Karen energy. He is always about two seconds away from asking to speak with your manager. Dynamite Thor blows up the roof of the hideout and shouts out his clever catchphrase, the roof is leaving town. If that isn't his catchphrase, all I can say is he never really had one, so we have to settle for what we can get. Was the explosion that was big enough to throw the roof off of a house enough to kill the criminals? Nope. In fact, they inexplicably ask each other what that sound was, and in the next panel, they notice the roof is missing. These gangsters respond more slowly than the world does to a disaster in Haiti. The criminals jump in their car to get away, but Dynamite says to himself that they're falling into his trap. And here's a twist worthy of M. Night Shyamalan. Dynamite's plan involves throwing more dynamite. This time he throws dynamite with pinpoint accuracy to blow up the bridge, stopping the car and allowing the police to make an arrest. With that, Dynamite refuses to give the police his name and runs away saying he has a date. Peter gets ready for his date with his girlfriend, Glenda, and takes her out to the theater, where the newspaper boy mentions a city gas tank is on fire. Peter waits for the musical to get to intermission, and then runs off to solve the problem. What I love about early comics is they clearly have no idea how to elevate the stakes. For instance, if the superhero of the story heard that there's an issue with a fire that's threatening the city and he instantly runs off to solve the problem, we understand that it's serious. But if instead we're told that somebody had time to write up a newspaper article, that the newspaper had time to print that article, the superhero hears about it and still goes to a play for about an hour before he decides to do anything about it, it's obviously not too urgent, is it? Dynamite Thor leaves the play and grabs a taxi to the fire, where he claims it could destroy the city. I'll give you three guesses how he puts out the fire, and the first two guesses do not count. Yes, he puts out the fire by blowing it up. Which is kind of like if you had to put out a grease fire in your kitchen, so you blew up your kitchen with some dynamite. Because that's all Dynamite Thor does. He blows stuff up. He then finds a tunnel nearby, and since intermissions are known for being hours long, he decides to follow this tunnel to see where it goes. He sees some guns and ammunition along the way, and the tunnel ends at the house that the criminal gang had been hiding in. Dynamite finds a criminal and threatens him, demanding he give up his boss who ordered the fire. This would be a perfect time to use his dynamite to threaten the arsonist, but instead he just punches him around and then takes the time to climb up a telephone pole while carrying the man and runs along the wires. Dynamite then takes the criminal to the police to have him arrested, and the police just take his word and book him. Then Dynamite Thor gets to leave without making any sort of a statement. He notices the same car from earlier and assumes it's more criminals as compared to a similar make and model of car. Once again, Dynamite solves all the problems as Dynamite Thor throws some explosives into a nearby water tower and stops the car under a deluge of water. I sure hope this town is not facing a drought. However, all the explosion really did was slow the car down, and Dynamite Thor hops on the back in the attempt to track it down and figure out who the boss of the gang is. Keep in mind, this whole time, Dynamite Thor is intending to go back to his date after the intermission ends. 
Dynamite Thor continues to ride along the back of the car like Marty McFly. Okay, Duck, you convinced me. Here goes nothing. Once the vehicle leaves city limits, the driver checks the rearview mirror and spots Dynamite Thor. These criminals belong on every clickbait list of world's dumbest criminals. They shoot at him, and Dynamite is forced to drop from the car. Fortunately, he still has his power of carrying Dynamite, and he throws it up into the mountains, bringing the rubble down on the car. The leader is still alive, and Dynamite Thor takes him back to the police, presumably on foot? After turning him in, the man confesses that he's an industrialist that was trying to bankrupt a rival. Then Peter changes back into a suit, just in time to return for the end of intermission. I can only presume that this is the end of the intermission for the third show that evening, because what intermission is long enough for somebody to change their clothes twice, make several arrests, take a taxi, uh, hop on a car outside of town, blow some stuff up, follow a tunnel, walk all the way back into town, make an arrest with the police, all of that before the curtain call. In the next story with Dynamite Thor, the art style seems to change, but it's still credited to Wright Lincoln. The caption explains that he's a former mine owner. This likely means he put himself out of business by stealing so much dynamite. It also mentions that he has a power. He's immune to his own explosives. The rest of the stories he's in after this are very similar, where he hears about gangsters or fifth column spies and chases them down. He does have a new power as of this second story. Dynamite Thor can now fly by dropping dynamite every few feet and blasting himself forward like he's in a video game. Sadly, the artist interprets this as a cloud of dust while Dynamite Thor is in a seated position, making it look like he's just farting himself across the ocean. Once again, Dynamite Thor gets himself into situations where his only question is, yes, but how do I solve this problem with a stick of dynamite? The answer is always to blow things up. From blowing up planes and submarines to escaping from being tied up, Dynamite Thor always has enough dynamite to blow up his problems. One strange wrinkle to comprehending these stories is the climax of the second story. This time, the criminals plan to blow up a building. Dynamite Thor takes their explosives and throws it into the ocean. However, as he farts his way back home, he says, Boy, just got away from that baby in time. Which brings up a question I don't think our cleverest minds could answer. Is Dynamite Thor somehow immune to his own explosions, but not immune to the explosions caused by others? But that's part of why I love Golden Age comics. They're absurd and bonkers, and therefore entertaining. After this, ultimately, there were only five total stories for Dynamite Thor, and then he disappeared into the public domain. The original Thor that Fox Features Syndicate created also went into the public domain, which is how we ended up with the movie Thunderstorm Return of Thor, which was released direct to dump. He will gain abilities never imagined and wield the power of the heavens. Thunderstorm The Return of Thor. Thank you very much for watching this weird look at Dynamite Thor, a very strange character. Uh, let's take a quick look at some fan art that came in this week, and then I have some parting thoughts. Ade from Nigeria sent in some fan art where I get to meet Luffy and Dr. Manhattan. Jason Licardi illustrated some colorful art of my sidekick Infotron and includes his Instagram link. Yotis Philippus illustrated a piece to celebrate the channel crossing 100,000 subscribers. His Instagram is listed below. Matt Cloud drew me as a Ninja Turtle. Very cool. Robbie Balfin includes me as an honorary fifth turtle. I would be honored. Richard Graham sends in some artwork where I meet my favorite turtle, Donatello. He includes his Instagram. Robert Wood created artwork of me reading about all sorts of great characters, including his own creation. He has his Instagram link below. Greg Granderson made some art based on my last video's opening sketch. Eric Flash from Costa Rica illustrated me as Galactus with Infotron as the Silver Surfer. He has a link to his Instagram included. Kyo Oniro drew me in the style of Criminal by Brubaker and Phillips. There's a link to Twitter below. Max Grainer sent in some artwork where I'm Doc Ock. He also has a link to his weekly webcomic. Ben Hay created an exciting image of me thinking deeply about the tropes of comic books. 
Daniel Ader from Brazil sent in this gorgeous piece, which is an homage to Eric Larson's Spider-Man run. I get to be Deathlock. And finally, Naomi illustrated a flattering portrait of me. Folks, if you'd like to send in fan art, I'm happy to share it at the end of the show. Just make sure it has something to do with Comic Tropes and send it into this email address, comictropes at gmail.com. After that, I will pick a winner from those entrants to get a Gachapon prize that I got out of Japan, and uh, they come out of the Gachapon machine that was donated by Lunar Shine Store. So, uh, let's see. First, we need to figure out who wins this week. Pardon me while I grab the ball hopper here. And, um... We'll see who wins. Uh, it is number five. Number five. So that was, uh, well, I'll show it over here this time. That was this artwork. And uh, let's take a quick look at what number five has won. So this, uh, this episode is obviously a little lighter than what I typically do, which is more of a deep dive into either the techniques of a creator or some piece of comic book history, but uh, every once in a while I need to give myself something a little bit lighter as a breather, and it's just fun for me. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, there are some totally wacky ideas out there for Golden Age characters. All right, this Gachapon prize is tinier, so it's in here. Let's see. Can I make out what character this is. I cannot. What do you, what would that be? Um, I, oh, you know what? Um, it's Deadpool. It's, it's some sort of a weird Deadpool. Uh, so that's kind of fun. That's, uh, yeah, they had a bunch of really interesting chibi Deadpools, uh, when I was at the Gachapon store last. So anyway, I will get the contact information for number five and I will send that your way. Uh, I hope you guys had fun this week. Uh, next episode is definitely a big deep dive into a big name creator, and it's uh, it's taking me a little longer with research, but that's fun. That's that's fun. I've, I'm always in uh, some stage of researching, editing, recording. Like it's it's getting busy, but you know what? I'm in quarantine, so I've got more time to spend on the show. Uh, trying to do my best, and uh, I'll try to have another episode out next weekend. That's my goal. Uh, don't know how long quarantine will last for me. Um, I'm sure many of you are in quarantine as well, so hopefully you're able to enjoy this. Uh, I hope you guys are making good decisions, being kind to one another. This is a very stressful time. Uh, keep washing your hands, wear a mask whenever you can if you go out, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know it's the same advice you've heard a million times before, but uh, hopefully you'll also consider hitting like and subscribe uh, the channel continues to grow, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I've been getting uh, a lot more support on Patreon, which means a lot to me. I'll just say that real quick. Um, I know I'm sort of rambling here, but I want to talk to you a little bit about behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, for whatever reason, more people seem to be watching YouTube right now, but the ad rates are going down. So we're, a lot of creators are making a lot less right now. I think it's because a lot of companies are hurting, so they're putting in smaller bids on the ads, which means we all get a tinier payout. But stuff like uh, Patreon helps offset that to a large degree. So if you're able to even do a dollar, I'm super grateful for something like that. Uh, but don't overextend yourself, especially in these trying times. Take care of yourself first, but if you can help me, uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, and. Um, yeah, I'm excited for, for what's coming up next. I think you're going to like it too. Uh, so until next time, keep reading comics.